friends, how are you all? Welcome back to the channel, Samantha's Frugal Living or Frugal Life, whichever call it what you want. Hope you're all well. Thank you to the new subscribers, you're very welcome as well. Um, today we're going to be talking about marshmallow root. It's a very, very um, easy to get hold of item. Now, when I ordered it online, I think it was from Whole Foods, I think. It just comes in a in a bag. So what I've done is empty it out into a glass jar for storage. And <clears throat> marshmallow root is at... Let me have a look. I'm not actually sure where that's come from. Behave, behave Samantha. No, it's not from Whole Foods. I do usually get my stuff from Whole Foods. Anyway... Not to worry, I have got some marshmallow root. It's a dry, it's dried marshmallow root. Now, if you can grow your own marshmallow root, even, uh, your own marshmallow plant, even better. You just dig the root, dehydrate it, grind it up a bit and store it. However, I don't have my own marshmallow plants growing, so I've had to buy some. Now, the reason why I'm using this at the moment is because you've seen my videos on my elderberry syrup, which is fabulous for your immune system. Add some echinacea in there if you're having a really bad time with flus and colds and your immune system's really beaten up like ours is at the moment. You can use your um, lemon, ginger, garlic and honey that I've made on this channel before. I will link a, a video in there for you in the iCards as well as the elderberry. That's really good for you for when you're having a, a bad time with colds and flu as well, to have as well. For obvious reasons with your lemon, your garlic and your ginger, um, your elderberry, uh, rose hip, hibiscus, syrup that I make with raw honey that's for your immune system it's lots and lots of vitamin c better than any vitamin c tablets you can buy from the shop even though we do have a vitamin c supplement that we have as well at this time of year I'm always concerned that we're not really getting all of the nutrition we need out of our food so as healthy as we eat here yeah we, we sometimes need a bit of a a boost don't we now, the thing with marshmallow root, now I have written some notes just because my memory is really, really bad and I know I'll forget to tell you something. So I have written something down just before I've turned the camera on just to make sure I don't forget to, um, to tell you, but it's not scripted in any way, as you can probably tell. So what I would say about this is the very first thing you need to do if you want to have some marshmallow root is check with your doctor first, a healthcare provider first, because it might interfere with some medication that you're on. You might have a food intolerance that means you can't have this. I don't know. I mean, marshmallow root is amazing. It's what we made originally marshmallow sweets out of. I know they don't make it like that now. It's more like a synthetic load of crap. But this is how we made marshmallows in the good old days using mar the marshmallow plant. So, excuse me while I just have a, a sip of my chamomile in my new... My new cup that my beautiful friend Jo bought me. She's a doll. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Thank you, Jo, again. Absolutely love this cup. Use it every day. Just having a chamomile. Right. So I did just make a few notes just to make sure because I know I'll forget to tell you something. So I've got a brain like a sieve. So, yeah, so I, I, and it does stay to avoid if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So again, if you're not sure, just talk to your doctor. Just check with your doctor first. I know it's hard to get through to doctors these days, but you've got to be persistent if you need to. If you need to check with them, you need to check with them. If you're on medications, like for example, I'm on blood pressure tablets and I have to take them in the morning when I have something to eat. So I don't have the marshmallow root tea close to that. Not that I think it interferes with that, but it does say if you're already on prescription tablets, try and take this maybe at a different time to what you're taking your other tablets because I think it can interfere with the effectiveness of your tablets. It's really, really good for 
bad colds and flu you know if you're really struggling with your chest and you're very mucousy and you're very you know you've got to cough all that phlegm up and it's awful it's really good for helping break that up it's really good if you've got bronchitis <coughs> excuse me it's also not just good for your respiratory but it's exceptionally good for your digestive system as well so for example if you've if you've got a bit of an upset stomach this is what you need um, i'm not a healthcare professional i'm not a doctor i'm not a dietitian i just know about herbs and, and natural remedies and what works for us so this is no way no way am i saying to you um to not take responsibility for yourself you have a responsibility to yourself to do your own research to know what you can and can't have and to check with your doctor first so i will put that very strict disclaimer in okay but this is excellent for respiratory it's excellent for digestive for stomach upsets it's also fabulous for your skin health for your hair for your you know all that sort of thing it's also good if you've had a, a, a wound you've cut yourself it's really good for healing any sores and cuts grazes anything like that it's just a really good all-rounder is that uh, marshmallow root if i've called it arrow root at any time i'm really sorry i've been looking through different recipes this morning marshmallow root now then you can use it with hot water to make it a hot tea but the only problem that i don't do that because you, you you're extracting the starch out of it then we don't want the starchy product from arrow root i go again marshmallow root what we want now i'm gonna to have to read my notes again because i can't actually say this word yeah we want the mucilaginous properties you know somewhere i wrote it down again because i just can't i can't pronounce that word it's a sticky kind of don't let this put you off but a bit of a slimy it's not really slimy but that's the only way i can explain it like a sticky slimy substance okay it's not unpleasant there's no taste to this at all it's not an unpleasant thing to to have so please don't be put off by that but that's what properties you want to extract from this to help with respiratory to help with your gut health um just to get you back on the road again on the road to recovery we've found this along with my other recipes absolutely invaluable these last two weeks while we've been getting over the flu uh, my husband was so ill and he has asthma so we have to really really take care of his respiratory uh when he's <coughs> excuse me when he's suffering with a cold flu anything like that it really does affect him because of his asthma so this as soon as he started taking this his chest were cleared within a couple of days he was feeling fighting fit again because he was having all the other things i was making for him the elderberry the honey and lemon ginger and garlic stuff all that echinacea all that stuff that i was making for him which i do have videos for so i will i will link them because we were throwing that at him he was he was well again really quickly and you don't get over flu quickly when we we've had flu in the past we've been at least a month before we've started feeling better but since the last few years we've been doing more natural products rather than the synthetic stuff you get from pharmacies and super stores and stuff we found that we've been getting better quicker now that might not be the case for some people and some people might not be able to have these natural remedies i'm not dissing the stuff you get from the chemist and the supermarkets i'm not you know over the counter products i'm not dissing them at all i all i think we should all have those products in our house in our storage especially for emergencies you know but what i'm saying is it's really good to have your, like your lem sips um and your cough medicines and your throat sweets and all that sort of thing you know paracetamol anything like that it's always good to have a stock of it in your pantry absolutely totally we do even though we use we will lean to our natural remedies first we do have all that in the cupboard as well just in case be stupid not to but i do find this natural remedies seem to get me better quicker that's all i'm saying so yeah not trying to sell you anything guys this is literally just for information only 
for you to then go and do your own research. I take no responsibility for anyone going, being stupid enough to go and do something without checking first. I check first. I would expect other people to have the sense to check first as well. That being said, this is the easiest thing in the world to make. So I will turn my camera finder that follows me off so I can just put the camera down a little bit just so you can see what I'm, I'm doing better. Right guys, so I've just used, I've got a little pint jar here. What I use for my canning, and I've also got the big quartz jars that I also use for my canning. I use them for storage as well. Now you, you should put two teaspoons per cup of water. So that's two teaspoons, but I'm putting two cups in, so I'm gonna double it up. So I'm gonna put four teaspoons in there, generous teaspoons. And I'm gonna fill it up, because this is about two cups if it's filled up to the rim. Not two cups worth of water. There we go. And then all we're gonna do, cold filtered water. I'm not using tap water. Too much chlorine in tap water. Do not want to ruin my goods with chemi the chemicals that they put in our water these days. That is filtered through my Berkey. So all we're gonna do, I'm put this on just in case this is leaking a little bit. I'm not so sure about these lids. That's not leaking, it's fine. I'm just gonna mix that up with my cold filtered water. And I'm just going to put that, it's, it's the afternoon now, it's lunchtime. I'm just going to put that in the fridge. Um, now, just lift you up a little bit again. Oops. So all I'm going to do now, where are you? There you go. All I'm going to do now is put this in the fridge. After about four hours, you can have it. You're all wonky again. I need to stop moving you. I need to stop moving you about, don't I? Stay. Shove it in the fridge for about four hours minimum. But what I will do is I will leave it overnight and I will have some in the morning. Now all you need to do is just pour some into a glass, about that much. I don't know if you can see that. About that much into a glass. I don't know, cups worth maybe. You just sieve it, just pour it through a sieve into a glass. What's in the sieve, put back in your jar and refill your jar. You should be able to do that about three times before you need to dispose of your marshmallow root. Now this will have a bit of a, a thicker consistency than water in the morning. You know, after it's been left overnight in the fridge. I mean, you can leave it for a minimum of, minimum of four hours. But I think it's better if you leave it at least 12 hours. The longer you leave it, the better. This will quick keep fresh in your fridge for at least, well, for a week because you're topping it up, aren't you? But I just keep making this. Every couple of days, I'll just make a fresh, fresh batch, pop it in the fridge. And then my husband and myself get home from work. Well, my husband stopped having this now because it's cured him. I started with the flu the week after, after the hubby, hubby. so I'm I'm just getting over it now, but I'm still feeling really, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I'm still feeling really struggling with my chest and my throat, so I'm just going to carry on having this for another couple of days, um, because it's really working, it's really helping, so cold, cold tea this, and it's absolutely fabulous, it really, really is, so... I'm not doing much at the moment, obviously, with me feeling, feeling ill. I'm, I've been in bed all week. I've not been able to get out of bed all week. I think yesterday, Thursday, yesterday, was probably the first day I actually managed to get up and and just potter a little bit. But I, I soon got tired and had to go back to bed. That's what flu does to you, isn't it? But today I was feeling a little bit stronger today, so I've got up and done this video with you because it's really important this time of year that we have these remedies and and the know-how as well. Because if it comes a time where we can't get medication from the pharmacies and the supermarkets or the counter stuff, 
I mean, we've had shortages before where we've not been able to get even prescription tablets from the doctor. You've gone to the chemist how many times and they've said, oh, we haven't got any in stock. You'll have to, you'll have to try and get it from somewhere else. It's ridiculous. So there has been a supply problem with medication. So I think it's important to have this knowledge, you know, have this skill set, learn about herbs, learn about natural remedies and do your research whether you can actually have it or not, if it's gonna, not going to be harmful to you, because you need to be just as wise and just as careful with herbs as you do with and plants and all sorts of other, you know, not just herbs, but all sorts of other natural remedies. Um, you need to take care, just like you do with prescription tablets and over-the-counter products, you need to know whether you can have it or not, whether it's right for you. Like, for example, I can't take ibuprofen. If I've got a really bad headache, I used to take the, um, I think it was Nurofen Plus, when I had a, when it started with my really bad headaches, I used to take like the liquid capsules. I can't have them anymore because of the medication that I'm on. But I know that through the research I've done, right, I'm on this, what can't I have? You know, just take a bit of time to check first. That's what I always say, better to be safe than sorry. So you do need to be just as careful with herbs and natural other natural remedies as you do with stuff from the doctor and the chemist. And sometimes your doctor makes a mistake and prescribes you something that you shouldn't have because of the something else you're on. You know, it's always better to check. But um, I think in this day and age now where things out there are getting quite difficult now with one for one reason and another, we'll not go into politics or anything like that on this channel, but although I might do one day, um, things are getting harder to, it's harder to rely on, on our NHS in England, our, our NHS system is getting harder and harder to be able to go to them now. Um, they, they seem to be coming up with more and more reasons not to treat people. And the healthcare system all over the world, I mean, America, I know some of my American friends are saying their healthcare is just, ridiculous now trying to get an appointment for things is, is really difficult so it's just as bad there as it is here so i just think having the know-how in your um little notebooks making notes and recipes and stuff is really a good idea and having the stock in your pantry to make these things so you can look after yourself if you have to i know heidi from rain country her and her husband um have completely completely healed themselves with natural products she has a video on thyroid she was given thyroid medication she was like mm, i'm not doing this i'm not doing this i'm not going to be on prescription drugs all my life i'm not having it and i know rudy from alaska prepper has done the same with diabetes I haven't seen I haven't watched anything from Alaska Prepper for a long time, so I don't know how he's doing with his diabetes. I'll probably need to try and catch up with him soon. But I know that uh, this is not I'm not recommending you come off tablets from your doctor, for goodness sake. I'm not that stupid or irresponsible. But what I'm saying is there are people out there that are helping themselves, and there may come a time when we have to help ourselves. So get the knowledge now through YouTube, through, re you know, there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that are, I won't watch because I think, oh, never take that advice. But there are some really good channels like Heidi Rain Country, um, Mary from Mary's Nest. She's another really good one for knowledge and get some uh, really good herbal books that are that come highly recommended do your research and get some herbal books start learning about plants how to grow them you know how to cultivate them how to process them what to do with them how to store them how to dehydrate them all those things are i think skills we're all going to need at some point in the future so Today is the time to start learning. Don't put it off because we all need 
to be able to help ourselves when we're poorly, when we're sick. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my little lecture for today. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. And I do hope that you do start learning about herbs and, and remedies. If, if you haven't already started, please, uh, please start today, make today a priority and uh, try some of these, these natural remedies that are, are fabulous. You know, nature is wonderful and it does provide us with lots of good things. And I do think we really should be using them to the best of our ability. So yeah, guys, that's it. I'm sorry I've been absent. I have put a couple of community posts up just to keep you in the loop that uh, we've not been so well. I will try and do another video either later today or tomorrow to upload another day so that, you know, I'm going to try and get in front because I've been missing so many videos that I've been needing to do with you and I've just not been able to do them for one reason or another. My daughter was home from uni last week as well. Excuse me. So there's been a few reasons why I've, I've not really been able to get a video out to you. So looking after husband, looking after myself and having my daughter visit from uni, well, visit, come home from uni has been um has been quite uh, a nice couple of weeks really so yeah i will speak to you very shortly but for now goodbye god bless take care and i'll see you again soon friends bye for now